Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to look at how to add Tailwind CSS to an existing project, and when doing so, how to avoid naming collisions, specificity issues, and also how to leave a really, really small footprint. Let's get right into it. All right, setting the stage here. I've got this friend of mine called Darren, which in Australian automatically translates to Daza. And he runs surf camps and surf safaris as a business. He's got this website that was built a few years back. So you can see the different types of camps that he's offering. And so Daza asked me for a little bit of help. Uh, he wants to make a few changes to this website. Nothing much, essentially he wants to add a new team section because he's recently hired two new surf coaches for his team. He's also sent me this Word document with a bit of copy and a picture for each coach. And by the way, quick shout out to HTML5 up since Daza's fictive website was built using one of these templates. I've downloaded the website on my computer here and there's a few pages, but we'll only look at index.html. And right away, I can see that there's a link tag to a file called main.css. So let's go look at that. All right, so by the looks of it, it starts with the CSS reset. And as I keep scrolling down, I start to realize that learning how an existing CSS codebase works can be really overwhelming. And while I'm sure that all this CSS works really well, I wish that I could just use Tailwind CSS for this new section since I'm already really familiar with it. And you know what? This is exactly what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a way that avoids conflict and leaves a really small footprint. We're going to keep it super simple here, no build tools involved, and we're not even going to install Tailwind CSS or create a CSS file as an entry point. We're just going to create a Tailwind config file so we can customize the project a bit. But outside of that, we're going to use a simple one-liner command in the terminal, which is going to take care of everything for us. First, I'll create a Tailwind config with npx Tailwind CSS in it. All right. So in here, I'll use the mode just in time, which by the way, will become the default mode in Tailwind CSS version three. And in our purge array here, I'll ask to look for every HTML file in our root directory. So it's going to take care of all of these. Okay, cool. So next we're going to generate a CSS file with npx tailwind CSS, and we need to define an output. So dash dash output, and let's collocate it with the other CSS file. So in assets CSS, and we'll call it tailwind.css. And we'll also pass a dash dash watch flag so that the CSS is recompiled every time something changes. Great, so here's our new CSS file. And you see here that it starts with modern normalize, which is also a CSS reset. And as you can imagine, this is going to conflict with the other CSS reset in the existing website. So, well, let's see what happens. So I'm going to duplicate this link tag and this one is going to point to our new tailwind.css style sheet. And so here on the left, I've got Daza's live website and here on the right, the website we're making changes to. One thing you can notice is the heading tag here has been normalized uh, in terms of font size and weight compared to the default one. And you might notice that the font family is different and the same happens with every heading tag. And that's definitely not what we want here. We don't wanna change anything to the existing website. We just want to add our little team section without affecting anything around it. Here, we want to opt out of Tailwind's CSS reset called preflight. And the way you do that is in the Tailwind config file, open the core plugins object. And here we're going to target preflight and set it to false. And now both our websites are back to looking exactly the same. As you'd imagine, our generated Tailwind CSS file should be empty, but it's not. We've got this container class here and yes, Tailwind has a container class, but we haven't used it. So why is it here? In our index.html file, if I scroll down for a bit, sure enough, you can see this header with the class of container. The existing CSS already has a container class and that exposes at least one place where we're gonna have a problem. Since we have no idea of what other naming collisions we might face, we're going to do another thing in our config file and we're basically going to namespace all Tailwind CSS classes with a prefix. And here I'll go TW dash. And this time our Tailwind CSS file is truly empty. All right, perfect. So let's start building this team section now. We want to build this just before the footer section. So I'll add a comment here. Since in the Word document, there is a heading and an intro paragraph, what we're going to do is borrow the markup for this heading and intro paragraph from the section before. We will grab everything till the end of the header. So let's paste that here and make sure we close the section and the wrapping div and this is what we have, which is a really good start. 
I'm not entirely sure what these classes do, but I think the wrapper adds some vertical spacing and then the container is a max width container. So we leave this as is and maybe I'll change the ID to team. We're not going to use it, but we leave that here in case someone else needed that. And so let's grab a headline text and replace it here and do the same with the intro paragraph. Now I want to put some emphasis on this wonderful world and give it a treatment kind of like what we have at the top here. So I'll wrap it in an M tag and now we're going to add some classes. So TW, remember the prefix, font bold, nice, and text. And here, since we're using just in time, I might hard code the color. And this color here is actually somewhat the brand color. You can see it in logo, you can see it on hover states. So what we're going to do is add it to our Tailwind config file. So in our theme, I'll extend the colors object and we'll create a new color called highlight and set it to FF6B00. So here we can apply this text color, TW text highlight. And uh, it looks like the bold font is applied, but our color hasn't been respected. If we inspect that element, we can see that the font weight 700 has been applied, but our text highlight utility has been overridden by this custom nested selector here. So if that wasn't there, our color would be applied fine, but because it's here and it's more specific, this color is applied. And so that's a scenario that you're almost guaranteed to encounter. By nature, Tailwind CSS classes are really low in specificity, and so the chances of underlying CSS overriding it is very high. And so what we want to do here is give more weight to our utilities and we can flag them as important in our config file. So after our prefix here, we will add another option, important, and we'll set that to true. And so now you can see that all our generated CSS from Tailwind will be marked as important. Wait a second, isn't important supposed to be bad? Well, I'd say it's important that you know when to use it. In this case, we want our utilities from Tailwind to always override the rest of the CSS. So that's an actual legitimate scenario to use important. Looking at the website again, the color is applied properly and the custom nested selector here is being overridden by our Tailwind color utility since it's important. All right, so next let's bring our coaches down here. Let's build a list of coaches. So an ordered list and I'll scroll down. For each coach, we'll have a list item and each coach will have an image. So now as a placeholder, I'll use images and let's go with image 02.jpg. And just so it's not gigantic, I'll add a width class with TW width 80. We'll use an H3 tag for the coach name and a paragraph for the little biography. All right, so it might be hard to tell, but if I inspect, you can see that our unordered list, since we've opted out of Tailwind's pre-flight, there's things like this marker here or the padding left on the unordered list and the list item that we'll need to take care of. So let's start styling our unordered list. Like I just mentioned, we are going to remove the padding with TWP0. And I'll also do the same on the list item, right? And we can also get rid of the marker with TW. List none. All right. And let's also give our list item a subtle background color with TWBG gray 100 and a shadow with TW shadow. I'll scroll down a little bit. All right, let's replace our width 80 that we had on the image with width full. So it uses the full width. And I want to bring some internal padding to this name and description here. So I will wrap both the heading tag and the paragraph in a div. And here we'll have some padding with TW padding level eight. And we're not going to change the font sizes or typography too much here. So it fits with the rest of the site, but I still want to handle some spacing on the paragraph tag. So here we'll add a bit of margin top with TW MT3. And it also looks like there's some margin at the bottom of the paragraph, which I don't want. So I'll remove it with TWMB0. So that starts to look pretty good, but this layout will eventually break at some point. As you can see, the image gets bigger and bigger. And if we look at it on our desktop, well, <laughs> this is not really working. It's way too wide. And so we could fix that with a max width container. So on the unordered list, TW max width, and we'll go with small here. And let's also center that with TW MX Auto. And yeah, that works much better now. I still think that when we have sufficient space, we might try to use a little bit more of this horizontal space and maybe have the image on the left and then the name and description on the right of it. And for that, we're going to use CSS Grid. So our list item will be our grid container. 
And so by default, it will be a one column grid, so everything stacks. But then uh, when we reach a certain breakpoint, the small breakpoint, we want it to split into 10 columns. So small breakpoint, TW, grid calls 10. And so once I reach the small breakpoint here, the grid splits in 10 columns. So the next thing we need to do is uh, assign how many columns the image and the text here should utilize. So our image, which is the first grid cell, uh, we're going to tell that on the small breakpoint, it should use call span three columns. And then the other grid cell, which is this one on the small breakpoint, TW call span the extra seven columns. So now we're being constrained by our max width container. So let's expand this a little bit. I had max width small and on small breakpoint, TW max width, and let's go with 4XL here. All right, that's better. Next thing to fix, we want the image here to use the whole vertical space available. So it's taking three columns and then we want it to fill up the whole vertical space, which is defined by the coach name and description here. To do this, I will wrap my image tag here in a div. And so that's going to break the layout temporarily because we need the three column span here to be applied to the direct child of the grid. And now what I can do on a small breakpoint as well is set this wrapping div to be relative. And by doing so, this allows me to set the image tag to absolute. And let's also add a class of height full. So now it takes this whole space available. Obviously the image is distorted and we can fix that with object fit cover. So small TW object cover. And so now the image will use its normal aspect ratio below the small breakpoint and at the small breakpoint and up will be cropped to use the available space depending on the height of the container. All right, that's looking great. So now let's go replace the placeholder image and text with the content that Daza gave us. Let's start with the first coach, Harry Eckerson, AKA Heckes. Heckes. So I'll replace the name here. I've already placed the images that Daza gave me so I can come here and replace this image with Heckes. And I'll grab the biography here and paste that here. And this is looking really good. One more thing I wanna do is style this nickname since they all have one uh, similarly to that. So here we can wrap this in an M tag and like we did before, TW font bold and TW text highlight. All right, great. So now let's duplicate this for the next coach. I'll grab the entire LI element and duplicate it. And we have a little issue here. We need some vertical spacing between each coach. So let's add a spacing utility on the unordered list right here, TW space Y and let's go with eight. All right, that's looking great. So let's grab the data for the second coach. Sally McDonald's, AKA Mackers. McDonald's. Mackers. Swimming costume. Cozzy. Mosquito. Mozzie. Tracksuit pants. Tracking pants. And again, we'll grab the biography and put it here. And I'll repeat the process one more time for the one and only Daza. <laughs> and our team section is looking really good. There's one thing I want to point out. Our layout here currently changes at the 640 pixel breakpoint, which is a small breakpoint. But if I scroll up, there is no such 640 pixel breakpoint on the actual rest of the CSS. And you can see here, we have a breakpoint at 736 pixel. If we poke around the website's existing CSS, you can see these media queries here defined as max width breakpoint at 680, 1280, 960, 840 and 736 pixels. That would be really nice to mirror these breakpoints so that the layout changes in our team section happen at the same time than the responsive changes in the rest of the UI. In our Tailwind config file, we're not going to extend but replace the screens object. And I will paste a few breakpoints here. And so these pixel values correspond to the breakpoints we've seen in the existing CSS. And I've named this breakpoint following Tailwind's naming convention. And now since these were max width breakpoint and Tailwind CSS breakpoints are min width, we need to add one pixel to each so that the layout changes happen at the exact same time. So now our small breakpoint has changed to 737 pixels. Here we have a width of 738 pixels. So we're still in this three column layout here and our team members are displayed in that nice grid layout. 
But if I go down under the 737 pixels, you can see that it jumps into one column and so does our one day adventures. All right, let's look at the website one more time. And I think that the section that we've added fits in really nicely. It uses the same colors, the same typography and blends in really nicely. And the best thing is we've only generated the CSS that we're actually using. And if we look at the file size, we've generated 1.87 kilobytes of CSS, which I think is perfectly acceptable. We could even take it one step further by minifying the CSS so we can reuse the CLI command that we were using. But instead of passing the watch flag, we just want to build it and we want to minify it. So I'll pass minify. And so that's going to, well, minify the CSS. And now we're down to 1.53 kilobytes or 598 bytes. All right, one last thing to consider. We have that Tailwind CSS file generated, but nothing tells where it's coming from. We've used the Tailwind CSS CLI to generate it, but there's no trace of that. And for someone who would jump into this project, it kind of feel like this file has been dropped here and there's no way to edit it. Something useful that we could do here is add a package JSON to this project and then add scripts with the Tailwind CLI commands that we've used. So I'll create a package JSON file with npm init. And here in the script, I can add a dev script, which is going to be npx tailwind css dash dash output assets css tailwind.css with the watch flag. And let's duplicate this and we can also have a build script, which will not watch but minify our CSS. And that means that now anyone can run npm run dev which will start the watch and build the CSS. And when they're done working on the project, they can run npm run build, which will minify the CSS. All right, let's take a quick recap of the things that we've done to integrate Tailwind CSS to an existing project. Most of these things happen in the Tailwind config file. We have opted out of pre-flight in the core plugins. We have namespaced all Tailwind classes with a prefix and marked all our utilities as important. And so that our integration is really fluid with the website, we have customized the theme a little bit by redefining the breakpoints so that they mirror the existing breakpoints in the CSS and adding a highlight color here. With that in place, we were able to add a new section to Daza's website that integrates really fluidly with the rest of the UI. And we've done so without touching anything else and leaving a really small footprint. And that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.